when it comes to handheld gaming, it is going to be taking over the next generation. I think we're going to be seeing the Xbox One. We're going to be seeing a PlayStation One. We're obviously have the Nintendo Switch too, and then you're going to have all the PC handhelds that are going to be getting their next generation. The Steam Deck 2, the next Asus ROG Ally, the next batch of Lenovo Legion Goes, especially the ones that have the Steam OS built into it, which I think is going to be a massive seller for Lenovo. And I think Xbox should follow along those lines and give out their OS to other handheld manufacturers so you can pick the Steam one, the Xbox one, all of that type of stuff. It'll be an interesting thing to see play out. But one of the things that I think holds back handheld gaming right now for a lot of people, including myself, which is why I don't have my raw gala anymore is just simply the battery life. It's almost pointless to have it as a handheld because you always have to have it plugged in to a power source when you're playing any games that is semi demanding as the battery dies very, very fast. And at CES 2024, we may see an improvement on this now as AMD has announced their next APUs for gaming handhelds. One of the things that they are boasting is unplugged gaming, better battery life, which has me very excited for the future as I want to get back in to the PC handheld market. I'm just waiting for that better battery life. So we have this year, AMD Ryzen Z2 APUs for gaming handhelds have been revealed. The Z2 Extreme, Strix, and Z2 Hawk, and the Z2 Go rebrand with up to eight CPU cores and 16 GPU cores. And you can see the slide and the marketing materials that they have for this. One of the biggest things that they are talking about here I think it needs to be the major highlight going forward when these companies are looking at how can they make the handheld gaming market better, the PC handheld gaming market better. Obviously, trying to get better frame rates, trying to make games look slightly better, be able to get slightly higher settings. I don't think there's going to be big jumps from last generation to this one, but the biggest thing they need to focus on is the battery life and the amount of power that these things do draw. So you can get maybe up to four hours playing games on it. That would just be absolutely perfect for most people. They highlight here that there's going to be console class gaming in the handheld and you can stay unplugged for hours to game wherever you roam. We'll see what the benchmarks are when these do eventually come out. What does the hours mean? Is it just getting to two hours or are we going to get well beyond that? And then they also say maximum gaming fidelity enabled with AMD's gaming technologies. And here are some of the... Z2 series processors and what we can see in terms of where they are going and, and the products that they're bringing them out with, they're saying they are significant and growing, which this is not surprising. This is why you're seeing everybody go there. And you can thank the Steam Deck for this. You can thank Valve for kicking this off. They came out with the Steam Deck and I think that was kind of a test for a lot of people looking at it and saying, how well is this thing going to sell? People really want handheld gaming again because we had a, an era where you had the Game Boy Advance, you had the DS, the 3DS, the PSP, the Vita, and you had handheld gaming that was just massive. And people were really enjoying that stuff, at least specifically on the Nintendo side, as those are generally their biggest selling products. Even if you look at the current Nintendo Switch, it's essentially a handheld. And then it was just left up to Nintendo to continue with this. And then we saw Steam come out with the Steam Deck, and now we're seeing all these other companies jump into it. They're saying here that more OEMs are adding designs into the market, which is very cool. And battery life and software and performance leadership is basically what they are focusing on for how can they bring this thing forward into the next generation of handheld gaming. Now, in terms of the actual SOCs themselves, the Z2 Extreme, this is going to be where you're going to get the best performance, you could say, when the next come out they say these the amd ryzen z2 extreme is going to be the ultimate gaming handheld APU with a total of eight cores and 16 threads and will boast a maximum boost clock of 5 gigahertz 24 megabytes of cache and a tdp of 15 to 35 watts and a 16 rdna 3.5 igpu cores the chip is based on the strix die which will be the first true soc for handhelds with the zen 5 core architecture and then you have just the z2 basically a lot of it is the same here has the eight core 16 threads based on the Zen 4 architecture and a maximum boost clock of 5.1 gigahertz at 24 megabytes, but it only has the TDP of 15 to 30 watts, which I believe that's currently what is on the ROG Alley. It goes up to 30 watts for the TDP, uh, if I recall correctly. And then 12 compute units based on the RDNA 3 core architecture. And the Z2 SOC is based on the Hawk Point refresh architecture, which offers around 16 tops of NPU performance which is a slight uptick from the Phoenix SOCs that are featured in the Z1 lineup. And then you have this one here, which I'm guessing this will be the best for battery life. It's not going to be the best for power, but if you want something that is really portable on the go, it is the Ryzen Z2 Go, which has an entry-level APU 
based on the Rembrandt die, packs four cores with eight threads based on the Zen 3 architecture, max boost of 4.3 gigahertz, 10 megabytes of cache, 15 to 30 watts of TDP, and 12 iGPU cores based on the RDNA 2 architecture. So obviously, yes, this is going to be the lower end one. I just wonder what the total battery life on these things are going to be. All these stats are great. For me, I don't need the best looking games or the best frame rates when I'm playing and handled. I just really want to see how long these things can last uh, right now going forward. And here is just the overall comparison. Now, these are all coming in Q1 2025. And you have to ask yourself going forward with the whole talk about handhelds coming out from more manufacturers, specifically from PlayStation and Xbox. Are they working here with AMD right now with these chips and, and building up their handhelds with these in mind? Maybe that's why they're waiting put these things out or, or any sort of announcements because they are waiting for the stuff to get announced and then they're going to be able to put those into the upcoming handhelds we will see we're going to get a lot more information this week ces is going to be a ton of fun and i can't wait to see more about it but yes gaming handhelds this is going to be the future for the next generation this is going to dominate far more i believe than the at-home consoles especially with something like the switch 2 that is going to be announced very soon. We've seen pretty much everything about the Switch 2, the Joy-Cons, the dock. We've pretty much seen what's going to be on the motherboard. If all that stuff ends up being true with these leaks, it's pretty much been revealed and it's looking good. I mean, it's not looking too powerful or anything crazy like that, but it's looking like it's going to be a nice upgrade from the current Nintendo Switch. We also saw some new features about potentially the Joy-Cons being used as a mouse, which is something we'll probably talk about in another video. But I will end the video there. If you did enjoy this video, hit that thumbs up. If you're new here, hit that subscribe and I'll catch you guys in the next video.